They say if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. But if you teach a man to fish, then he's gonna get a fishing license, but he doesn't have any money. So he's gonna get a job. Few comedians are as idiosyncratic and outspoken about their politics and their personal habits as Doug Stanhope. Cause you were just worried about eating a fucking fish. And you couldn't even cook the fish cause you needed a permit for an open flame. And then the health department is gonna start asking you a lot of questions about where are you gonna dump the scales and the guts. This is not a sanitary environment. And ladies and gentlemen, if you get it, if you get sick of it all at the end of the day, not even legal to kill yourself in this country. Stanhope has been entertaining audiences with his bad taste and unapologetically libertarian tirades for nearly 30 years. In the early 2000s, he co-hosted The Man Show with Joe Rogan, including an episode where he entered a boxing ring against disgraced figure skater Tanya Harding. This is Tanya's first fight with a man that won't end up in her getting fingerprinted. Reason caught up with Stanhope at Freedom Fest, an annual event held this year in Memphis, where he performed a characteristically uncensored set. I'd rather suck shit off the stage. If you, you had a cat that left a diarrhea trail. We talked about why he's dreading the presidential election season, how he survived COVID's effect on touring, what he likes about psychedelics, and why he prefers creative independence over mainstream acceptance. So we're at Freedom Fest, which has been held in Memphis. Uh, what, I don't, would you know what, what is Memphis's nickname? I don't know if it's still a murder capital. Okay. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know if yeah. it has a, it's gonna happen. It, it's something like that though, yeah. something murdery. But no, I think they're both music, Nashville and yeah, yeah, Memphis. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this the, Home but of you, the blues? you dislike, well, yeah, I think it's uh, blues. Memphis has blues, rock and roll, uh, rhythm and blues, maybe. Uh, country Western is Nashville. Yeah, definitely. But you hate music. The Music City Miracle. So it's going to be the Music City. Now, remember? Music when, City, I think, is Nashville. Music City Miracle was, oh, wait, shit. Yeah, that's Nashville because the Titans. Are, so, that yeah. was when the Titans threw that right. uh, pseudo lateral. And Nashville, what was the team? They had a team called the Nashville Sounds. That might have been like a soccer team or something. It uh, sounds like uh, the, like ABA. Like it's just a Tropic really Thunder. Band. Yeah, uh, really bad. Wait, no, band. Tropic Thunder. Uh, the, 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 uh, uh, yeah, Will Ferrell. The, the Will Ferrell movie. Uh, what was that called? Tropic. Semi -pro. They were the Flint they Tropics. Were the, they were the Fort Wayne Tropics or something like that or so. Flint. Flint. Uh, you hate music, though. Not, Why do you hate music? I, I don't like that I, I'm forced to listen to music. Yeah. It's the only art form that is, you know, 99% of the time you're hearing it without wanting to. Most of the music I you know. You do not consent. Right. It's, okay. Yeah. Music is rape. I'll stand by that. Okay. <laughs> and you have a forthcoming special that you are going to explore this topic in, among others. Yeah, yeah. Is there, I mean, you are famous for being the worst self-promoter in history. Um, yeah, I was about your, to, I was about to not promote. I don't even know the name of this. I taped it in May and I haven't even gotten down to like watching it all the way through to give my editor points yeah. to, all right, take this from the first show and, and use the second show. That's a better yeah. version. I haven't even done that. I don't have a title. I had a title, but then I dropped the bit. You know, I don't like that bit. I'm not doing it. So without the bit, <laughs> Title wouldn't make what, sense. Uh, what what's fueling your apathy? Is it is it worse now than it was twenty years ago or forty years ago? No, I, I and when I look back, I see I, I don't see the upset that everyone is like the fear that they're just cranking out. I've seen everything before. I'm almost sixty, yeah. so uh, so they go, oh, it's never been this bad, and you go, well, it's, oh, the the, the genders. It, do you remember the 70s with the uh, feminism then? And you, we don't want to be called Miss or uh, Mrs. Right. We're uh, Ms. We're going to be called Ms. And everyone's like, well, you, you can't even open world, a door man. for a broad anymore. Yeah. yeah, I've seen everything that we're going through. I've already seen it. We're I think we, if we just said like, okay, everybody opens their own doors from now on, then we never have to talk about this again. But that's, right. that's what's happening is yeah. what was happening in the 70s, yeah. only 
there's more sources of. I am disappointed that androgyny, which I am I'm, I'm older than you, but I remember androgyny was going to be David Bowie and Twiggy. Uh, you know, so it was going to be thin, beautiful people who kind of looked the same. And instead, it's like the Campbell Soups kids, you know, where it's just chubby people <laughs> who are male and female, but they look the same in the world and they're just not attractive. Yeah. Uh Break a nuclear war. <laughs> yeah, that's a new one. Yeah, right? no, I've never, never heard seen that. that. Yeah, never heard about you know, it. Inflation. Right. So is there anything you were, I mean, you famously joked about 9-11, I think minutes before it happened, leading, you know, many conspiracy theorists to assume you were in on it. But you want to have the first joke whenever a celebrity dies, whenever a natural, natural or unnatural disaster happens. Yeah, and that was a lot easier before social media. Like, yeah. You have to get to a stage, and by the time you get to the closest open mic, a hundred people have already made that joke on Twitter. So, so is that fueling your apathy that like you you can't be first, so why bother? Or I think well, first of all, I've had a lot of uh, shit happen at home. Literally, I had a house fire, so I've been living out of a hotel for what nine months now. Uh, is that bad? Or do you like living well, I mean, it's house? it's one thing when I lived on the road, where you know, I spent half my you know, year in hotels anyway. But that's you keep your sanity by going to a stable home where you have your shit, and I know where my shit is. But if you keep moving back to a hotel that's your home, and I still have another house in Bisbee, but it's my wife's home, but I don't know where my and shit is, and now I have to pack or... to go to another hotel and. So what? How did the fire happen? Just a weird electrical fire in the attic. Lost nothing, but just trying to get people to work. Yeah. Again, yeah. Hey, we need to talk about unemployment. Right. Hey, work on my fucking house. What? Uh, like why is it hard to find people to work? Because it's a hippie town. Yeah. It, uh, there's there's a lot to be said for people who. Hey, people, you don't want to work. I could stand on a fucking a crate waving money in my town and unless it's like towards the end of the month before people get their disability check they everyone knows how to do shit they just rather not which i don't blame them this uh remind you were born in 1967 yes. right the summer of love is that why you're i, I mean, was spring of love right summer love was 67. i know i was, I was pretty young back then when yeah. i was born no but i'm saying is that why you hate hippies i i don't hate hippies well i've Here's a problem, Nick. I get to a place where I started hating everything. And I just even every commercial on TV, watching the local morning news because it's happy and stupid like Anchorman. And I'd smile a little bit. And the commercials, which is I hate every, and I want to smash that guy's face in. And I go, all right, this is me. If you hate that many things, it's you. But the problem is I know I have to be right some of the time. Some of these people do deserve to die. And I'm letting them all go because, because I, I know that the rest of them I'm wrong about. What are, what are the things that bug you the most right now? Like in contemporary America, I mean, one of the things you're saying is like we're hyping fear constantly as if it's new and it's recycled. But, you know, what are, what are the things that really bug the shit out of you? Uh, less and less of uh, uh, shit trying to think of now yeah, nothing nothing stands above everything else yeah. i think everything annoys me equally or doesn't yeah, yeah i the, if i could keep the same point of view for an entire 24 hour period i'd be happy i would be content i'd go okay that's how i feel about that but sometimes you know i'm i'm punching my uh, laptop screen yeah. in, in rage over this is stupid what are you thinking? And then the next morning, I'm like, get over it. So, what uh, What do you think about politics these days? I mean, you've always been libertarian, but uh, with a small L. Um, you know, are you looking forward to Trump Biden 2.0 or? It's I I look at it just like I look at football, where yeah, when the Bills were in four Super Bowls in a row, you're like, all right, I can't I can't take. That's what biden trump is like it's not entertaining whatsoever um i i lost everything when once trump got elected i i just don't get it what i do don't 
I don't get what how how he that could happen. Yeah. And not politically uh, tapping into anger, whatever. But it, it's still that guy. It's like if Maury Povich got elected, I'd go. I don't know where I live. I really don't. Have did you ever say? I mean, you're pretty close to the Mexican border. Did you know all, why is it celebrities, whatever, they're going to leave America? They always say they're going to go to Canada. They never say, oh, I'm going to go to Mexico. That's, that's, that's what I'm going to do in 2024. I'm going if to say, somebody wins the I've presidency, already, I've, you're moving. I've already looked yeah. at it. Yeah, if either of them win, I'm moving to Mexico because it's seven <laughs> miles away and I'm just going to get an apartment over the border. So it's just going to be me driving to the same grocery store in America, doing the same shit, but I have an apartment for me. Is it kind of great, though, that Trump won just because it is like, oh, you know, Trump or Maury Povich or... I don't know, you know, like I try to be so positive insane. about it, thinking that, OK, this could perhaps open the door for other people uh, it's going, hey, if he can win, I can win. And like a, a normal outsider, yeah. like a, a good outsider, not a, a, a wrestling villain yeah. guy. Who and I thought is a billionaire as well. But no, it didn't happen. I thought this next election, the last one yeah. would be full of all these. Yeah. No one. Nobody, like Penn Gillette or someone like that. Right. What, um, you know, do you expect anything out of politics? No, it, it's, no president has ever affected my life. Yeah. Like, I've never, if I look back, I, I was born under LBJ. So again, I don't really remember it. But if, yeah. I, I, I remember Carter. I remember hoping yeah. Carter would win because I always like to pick a favorite. Yeah. To, the, to this day in sports, I don't follow basketball, but... I'll, I'll have a favorite team, an underdog, and I'll root for a, you know. So uh, Carter didn't do it for you. But uh, I, 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 my life didn't change. Yeah. Do you think it would have changed, like if Carter had been reelected, would that have changed the, the course of human events in a way that was measurable? I, I can't imagine. Uh, but I, again, I have not had a traditional life where I was, yeah raising the kids and they're paying for college yeah. loans. I have a ninth grade education and I, I lived on people's couches anyway. Yeah. It's not because it was a tough times economically and the plant closed. It's because yeah. I was screwing off and I'm going to move to Vegas and yeah. I'm going to be a professional gambler. What, uh, what energized you to do that? To do to, what? To, like to wander? leave school at ninth, in ninth grade and like leave home and, and wander around. Uh, school. I was, uh, Horrifically bored was one of the things that killed me during the the, the corn times where yeah. people go, my kids want to go to school and they miss school. No fucking yeah. kid wants to go to school. We would have snow days and you would shit in your pants sitting next to an AM radio hoping they called. Your school was closed that for the is, day. That is like a great memory. Lottery, yeah. yes. And now you're trying to tell me your kids really are desperate to go back there? No. So you hated school, but then, you know, that you could have gotten a job at the plant or something, right? You chose to roam around the country. Yeah, I, actually, I don't I mean, know. I, I, so. I, I, it's not like my parents were, they weren't uh, artistic at all, but uh, they, they were all for me going out. And I was going to be an actor when I was 18. And as soon as I was legal to run uh, at 18, I, I went to Hollywood with, $450 in my pocket, took the train across country and went to, and I learned more in three months of what Hollywood actually is <laughs> trying to survive. How would you summarize that? Uh, uh, it's the trial by fire. It's like boot camp for real life. Like, yeah. okay. Oh, these are gay prostitutes. And yeah. they, they work out of this. I thought I was getting a really good deal on this uh, share a bathroom uh, uh, yeah. uh, hostel uh, place. Oh, these are, yeah. oh, now it's not a woman after all. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, the nine years I completed of schooling paled in comparison to three months of living uh, in Hollywood. When did you realize, like, was there a particular moment when you're like, okay, I don't want to be an actor, I want to be a stand up? Uh, well, comedy kicked off. I moved to LA in 85, and it was, I had moved at this point, I was living in Las Vegas uh, in 1990, and that was at the height of uh, stand up comedy. The boom, the 80s boom was just. And hadn't... you don't think that was because of Ronald Reagan? You think it was no. independent of who was president? No. Okay. No. Uh, 
Yeah, it was actually uh, George Bush because when I started open mic, they they started the uh, they kicked off that first war there. Yeah. And I remember sitting in a in a bar that I regulared and having a pen and a, a notepad trying to make funny out of the war. What, uh, do you remember what your first? I don't. Uh, first I don't Gulf remember war joke any was? jokes uh, specific to the Gulf War. But my what was your jokes favorite? sucked so bad back yeah. then. Anyway, like, <laughs> they didn't even have to have truth to them. What was your favorite um, uh, 9/11 joke? Or what is your favorite 9/11 joke? I had one I really loved, and again, my bits are not succinct and f camera friendly, but it was, it was a, I think six months after the war, it was about the death toll and how they, they first said as over 10,000 people dead, and then it went down and it's 8,000 and 6,000, and, and, uh, and now they're saying it's uh, 3,300 people died at this rate. I believe, oh, it's, that was the premise. When is it going to be okay to make jokes again? And I went through the, the death toll limit. I, uh, so uh, my answer is June 3rd, because at this rate, no one will have died from 9-11. Uh, the, the amount of decline, if this, yeah, by then, zero people will have died. What uh, you mentioned, your jokes, when you were starting, I didn't have truth to them. Yeah. What talk a little bit about that because like a lot of stand ups or a lot of uh, comedians talk about being truth tellers. Um, yeah, yeah, but I was a 23 year old guy that just, I couldn't sing at karaoke or I wasn't athletic. So, hey, this is a way to get noticed in a bar and uh, maybe get laid because uh, I'm kind of funny. Sea Monkeys, I remember. Yeah. Uh, sea Monkeys is a funny reference. And I, I remember writing a bit backwards, like, Sea Monkeys started it, and okay, how do I make it? And it was something about sexually transmitted sea monkeys or something. I don't know. But so, yeah, just. But it didn't have truth. No, no, I don't yeah, know. Because they're not really monkeys. No, it's just yeah. funny words to say. How do I get people to laugh? Yeah. So then, what, are, what is. Now I don't give a shit if they laugh. Now I, <laughs> now I go, am I amused? Uh, do, does the audience win or lose in that? I think normally it, they can tell if you're enjoying yourself, they're coming along for the ride because yeah. they don't know what's funny or they wouldn't have fucking paid you to come in. Yeah. If they could do this themselves. What, uh, you know, your humor is uh, typically described, and I think this is accurate, as dark or, you know, I mean, like you, you like immediately to go into places where most people don't uh, and spaces. I guess I understand why you do that. Like you're driven to do that. Um, why do you think people who are not doing that on a regular basis, what, what's the interest in, you know, in going along for a ride with somebody who is driving into very dark places? Well, first of all, if people really believe these are the end of times, then we're all living in a dark place and you need to, yeah. to find the funny in it. I would love to see cancel culture go after the people who live in dark places. First responders, EMTs, people are known for having the most caustic, because they have to, crime scene, detective, hardened, you know, firefighter, and they're making the most repulsive jokes back at the station about your grandmother's corpse that they just peeled out of a, a burning building. Uh, yeah, go ahead, cancel them. Yeah. Yeah. They made fun of your grandmother just minutes after she died. Yeah, that's how you live. I just we just had our last podcast. Uh, our neighbors and friends uh, had uh, one of their tweaker friends of meth psychosis think, oh, uh, everyone's trying to harvest my organs. I'm going to kill everyone in the house. It was an mm -hmm. attempted mass murder right. down the street. And uh, our friend, she's an open mic comedian. She got her heel blown off. Uh, and uh, I go, oh, this is going to be a great podcast. Finally, we have something fun to talk about. <laughs> Let's get that. <laughs> get footloose over how here. Did gonna... good, how did that go over? It's, I, we had a blast. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how. Uh, it's the podcast, so you, it's not yeah. like a crowd where you can tell if they laughed yeah. or not. But yeah, most of our, our, our most listened to podcasts were a suicide, a, you know, a death, a something tragic. And uh, did they, uh, did they, uh, I mean, they found the guy who was involved in that shooting and whatnot, right? Because you're- It was a lady, yeah, it was a, a gal, yeah. 
Yeah, and um, she would she just snapped or? Yeah, she was. She was. You know, Do you worry? Meth, I was used to be pro drug, but now I'm a little bit more selective because meth heads are fucking yeah. just. Do the you worst. think? Do you think is the country getting more violent, or is it kind of a steady? It sells state tickets, of... so you, I, I don't know. I remember uh, one of the books that really changed my point of view was "You Are Being Lied To." Disinfo.com is a, a compendium of different essays yeah. about things you think you know. And the, the first uh, black baseball player was, uh, you know, no, no, they, they actually had black baseball players right. you know, during Reconstruction, in the eight, but they don't count that. Right. Uh, and just all, all these, you know, you were being lied to. And one of them was about mass shootings and how, like, it, it gave numbers about, yeah, there were mass shootings. They just didn't get as much coverage or school shootings. Now I think that's probably not correct because this was in the 90s. I'm yeah. sure there are more shootings, but I think people are more on edge thinking that everyone else is violent because that's what they sell on TV. Yeah. So everyone's in a, like, a reactive, like, <laughs> someone's you... on my lawn. Yeah, do you like what do you, what do you think's going on then that we're you know that we're we're more hyped I mean is it just TV and the way people talk about stuff or is there something changing in American culture I I noticed this when I was just even as a teenager uh you pick up the paper and I I know that I'm reading about the murder I'm reading about the 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 brawl at the thing I, and the oh the tax rates and the Local school union things, skip, yeah, yeah. skip. Yeah. So yeah, if you if you you eat a diet of all shit, but is it like I mean you you may be a little too young to remember like Jim Jones? No, right? no. Okay, uh, yeah. Or uh, the Zodiac Killer is a little bit before your time, but Son of Sam would have been a thing. And like you know, you would read just the weirdest things. There was that um, school bus full of children in California. They were kidnapped and like buried underground. It was turned into like you know, oh, part yeah. of a dirty Harry. I mean, but it was. It seemed like in the '70s, certainly, or then John Wayne Gacy would you know come into view or something. There was something totally weird and fucked up happening all the time. Yeah, and, I mean, so was that driving the turn to talk about violence and serial killers and stuff like that, or was it? Do they get conjured by the way that we talk about stuff? I don't know. Now you're getting into the murder porn area. Why? Why? And that's mostly a female thing. It seems to be. Uh, why now we're yeah. watching? Well, you say I'm too young to know about these things, but I wouldn't be because yeah. they're all popular now. Right. right yeah. Every every mass murderer from yeah. you know, uh, Dahmer, Ed Gain Dahmer on. was dominating like Netflix for a month or yeah. something like that. Yeah, I, and if people don't watch happy shit. Yeah. Uh, what do, what do you watch? I don't, I, I watch almost no comedy. Yeah. Like, like comedy, if it's a comedy on television, that's a buzzword for not funny. Yeah. I couldn't tell you a single actual sitcom that's on a network right now. The only time I ever see commercials uh, is watching football. Uh, so that's the only thing I watch in real time. Everything else, I can't, yeah. Is DVR'd or Netflix, uh, so it's either no commercials or I can fast forward through them. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't watch anything funny because I can't find it. Uh, so yeah, I watch whatever's uh, you know bingeable. Yeah, uh, you. I guess I'm. Um, uh, you were on Louis C.K.'s show. Uh, this is years ago on FX, on and you played. Was it yourself or a version of it? I mean, it's certainly it, a version of it. It was, he had it as an amalgamation of a lot of comedians right. that he thought I would do well at, not knowing that, no, he's, I'm playing exactly myself. Right. It was, it was me if I hadn't made any money in comedy, but yeah. still doing it for, you know, beer money. And uh, you have a, a bit that's very funny and you I highly recommend that your Instagram feed is just great because it's just clips from all over your career that are, short and very funny, but you, uh, in one of them, you talk about how Louis got contacted by Robin Williams and said like your performance was like a searing, you know, just a great bit about suicide, et cetera, like shortly before he died. And what is your bit that's related to that? I, now I think maybe I, 
as much as he was a great influence on other comics, maybe I was a great influence on the last days of Robin Williams' life and his decisions. Yeah. Uh, that was the I bit as far as I know. Yeah. And I mean, do you, uh, like, audiences seem to love that. Do you have to give them permission to laugh at that kind of humor? I don't know. I, I'm not a comedian that uh, steps out of my comfort zone. I'm not a guy that goes to the comedy cellar and works out, uh, you know, a new bit. Or I, I perform to my paid audience only. Like, this will be interesting at Freedom Fest because there will be people that are not here to see Doug Stanhope. They're, they're here to see comedy, and it, it'll be fun. But I will cherry pick the bits yeah. that uh, are Freedom Fest related. Or maybe mocking of, uh, but still, it'll be. I'm not going to try to drag them into some other part of my reality that's not yeah, that's foreign soil. But it's still, I don't, I don't work stuff out. If I have new yeah. shit, I'm going to do it tonight at my show that in front of my fans. Yeah. And I think I work. You know, I'm 33 years now. I, yeah, at some point, yeah, I'm going to completely well, lay back on bad, my laurels. Right? I mean, you you could be bad. Like, I I had school teachers who were, you know, at it for 30 years who sucked. Yeah. So, like, but... But um, the, 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 the audience tells you already. Right. You know, hey, if they're going to pay $55, $60 to get in, yeah. uh, they're, they're not, you know, what um what went into I you know one of the things that I think is is genuinely fascinating about your career and and I realize like you're not for all tastes right but you have a great career and you've also really refused to I and sell out isn't the right word because there's people who have made it gigantically big who are doing exactly what they want to and they force networks and audiences to come to them rather than yeah. any of that but. What goes into the calculation of, you know, of being like a really independent voice in a form where there is a mass audience? Like, you know, how do you, how do you do that? Um, and how do you keep at that? I, I guess what I'm saying is there's, there's a couple, you know, there's a, there are not that many comedians who have the opportunity to go super big, who remain true to what they are. Like, you, you know, you haven't got you haven't done a sitcom where you are, you know, the bachelor dad who inherits a family of alligators. I haven't turned a lot of stuff down. <laughs> I mean, I, maybe there, I'm wrong. I, there's, yeah. there's, well, there's things that yeah. I, I wouldn't do, but I, I have never had to been in a place where I go, oh, dude, the man show was a thing where yeah. I went, okay, yeah, for that kind of money, I, but I had no idea it was going to suck. Like, I didn't kn know going in yeah. that... Th Oh, they, they, you, you can do whatever you want with it and your own voice. So they were saying that. Yeah. And then, and then when it like, came to, really uh, oh, you know, yeah. filming day, wait, we, I thought, yeah, the lawyer said no on this and the censor said no on that. Yeah. So we're going to go with the other thing that the writers wrote and that sucks. And yeah. you're like, ah, fuck. How did that feel? It, that's why I left LA. That's yeah. why do you live in Bisbee? Cause I did the one thing you're supposed to want to do in LA. The only reason you live there is to get a thing. And I go, it sucked, and uh, the only I'm the only guy who did a TV show that uh, became less popular because of the, like, I had my co comedy career going fine, and now people think I suck. So, so yeah, like, I don't need to be in LA. I'd rather live in a small town. So, I, I wanted to ask in the uh, in your book, uh, this is not fame from a couple of years ago, which is a great memoir, and you your your oeuvre, your bookshelf is is building up into pretty good one. I hope you keep writing them. Uh, but you had Dr. Drew Pinsky uh, read a, a foreword uh, to, uh, to This Is Not Fame. And you said, or he wrote, one day Doug may need or have to change. Do you, have you had to change yet? Uh, I, ha I, well, I, did, I did quit smoking in, uh, 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 February. So this is July. How uh, was that going? I did. It was not nearly as hard as I, I, I'd been trying. I did blood work for the first time as an adult. I went and actually got a physical because I thought it'd be funny. I, and I thought, oh, this is going to be some, you know, my lifestyle. There's some shit that there. No, I'm in really good health. My liver's great. What? Kidneys fine, blood sugar, no diabetes. And the only thing, uh, high cholesterol, not too bad, but triglycerides through the roof. Yeah. And uh, so I've been trying to 
do changed all these diet things. Drowning added sugar just it, way harder than quitting smoking. Right. Just cutting sugar out. I would yeah. What uh, about drinking? Drinking, I, I yeah, that's where I'm. Uh, I'm toying with it. Yeah, I'm trying to drink uh, wine. Drink less, obviously. Uh, and uh, okay, wine uh, supposedly better. They won't tell you a lot of shit. Like when you look up and Google, okay, what alcohol is best for tri high triglycerides? They're not going to say, and I'm sure someone knows, but you, they're just going to say, yeah, you shouldn't drink alcohol at all. Alcohol is bad for you anyway. Yeah. You know, there's there's someone who knows. What uh, what about other drugs? How are you? Uh, what what drugs? Are I, you I that's still things, that's right? what I'm really my my weak spot is I haven't been doing any hallucinogens and I need to. Yeah. What do you, what's the benefit of hallucinogens? I just it clears out all your bullshit. Uh, you know, you slough off all the you know the things that you're doing wrong and the, the, the fears that are irrational that you're. So I, mean, I always think of it as like clearing your web browser cache. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's um, a why aren't you brain doing that? douche? Just because you get to the the older you get, the more shit, the more baggage that you're gonna have to deal with, and you go ah. That, Wait, so it, that's it's a why sink you don't that has that? dirty dishes, oh, okay. and you you look at it and you go, I don't want to deal with that. But the longer you don't deal with it, the higher the stack gets, and then you don't want to deal with it more. So I do want to do an ayahuasca binge. I do have a a, a bit about that on the new special, but. Uh, I just don't want to do it with a like a shaman that do ruins you, it. Yeah. Do you worry about uh, like psychedelics are really hot right now? Yeah. Does that fill you with hope or does that fill you with anxiety? No, I think that I think it's a, a fantastic thing. Uh, but that's why the, the whole the, the uh, medical the tripper tourism that they're doing and how they and they use uh, this the bit is in part that they use. Uh, uh, hallucinogens for uh, PTSD, all these reasons, uh, uh, end of life situations, struggles, and uh, getting over depression. They use it for everything except fun, right? Which is what got me into. Like, I want to do it, but have fun. The whole shaman route, they don't want you to have fun. I want to do my own version of it and uh, have a sober sitter, but not a guy with face paint chanting. Um, you uh, wrote in uh, No Encore for the Donkey, which is your most recent yes. book, right? Um, the more you experience an age, the more you can count on diminishing returns. What? Uh, yeah. Do you remember writing that? Or no, uh, I, I I don't. Uh, do you believe that? Yeah, I I, I I think I could stand by that. What What's the context? Uh, you know, it's. God, it was was it towards the beginning or the end of that book? But it was it was part of a passage of yeah. I I it's kind of a takes one to know one thing where sometimes I'll be watching TV or, or hear some dialogue and you go, I know the writer whoever wrote that was probably high fiving himself when he wrote that clever yeah. fucking line because I'm probably the guy that was high fiving myself so when I wrote that. Like book. that sounds well. Really do you? Smart, I mean, you know, do you feel like? Uh, there's there's new stuff that you're going to be experiencing or are you kind of like have you hit the point where now your life is just kind of a steady state it might be my well that's uh, exactly why i need to do hallucinogens because i do need to i know there's there's new and different things to do but i'm also really good at prejudging what i'm gonna hate yeah. like i i know i know i'm gonna uh i knew i was gonna hate the uk going over there and Every every preconceived notion was right, and I hated it. I, I, really? Not, yeah. But you've done well there. Yeah, and I have to go back and hate it because it it pays well. Well, right. now that their money's worth fucking nothing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I, yeah, I, I went uh, you know, skydiving. I went. Hmm. I remember Bingo and I. We went. Uh, it's not skydiving. What's on the boat? Oh, parasailing. The, parasailing, and we were hungover. We had partied all night in Tampa the night before, and I remember us just sitting. There were three of us. We're just sitting there. We couldn't have been more bored if it was an elevator. It's like, this is nothing. So, what? What excites you? 
though. Is is there anything? Chaos. That, yeah, yeah. 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 When the fucking neighbor just get their foot blown off in an yeah. attempted mass murder, you go, okay, that's yeah. That kind of stuff is where I thrive. I'm like, all right, rally the troops. Yeah. We, we we got fun going on. Do you expect that to increase uh, in the coming years? And if so, why? I have, I have no idea. I don't know what's going on with people anymore. I, I used to, I, there was some kind of comfort in having a false sense of knowing what's going on in the world and having an opinion like I used to. Yeah. Uh, and now I know that I'm probably wrong about a lot of shit. And yeah. So let, let me stay away until I have a better footing. Does that fit into libertarian thinking at all? Like, I mean, is that part of your libertarianness of like, you don't, you know that you don't really know that much. The, the problem with uh, knowing that you don't know that much and admitting it, people don't, people want, uh, uh, you know, false bravado. They want, uh, even if it's got no backing, they want someone who, and this is what it is, and I'll tell you, and I, I know, and it, do you, I, I mean, do you, you don't think like people are finally getting fed up with that, like after COVID and whatnot, because that's what we had, right? Oh my Where God. The same people would say, you know, you got to do this this week and then next week with exactly the same level of authority and determination and commitment. Now you got to do this. And I, I, I thought people would get to a place where, and, and even that, that part of my act that I was doing after, you know, quarantine was over and I was back on the road about, it's okay to not have an opinion. It's okay to not know, did not get the uh, reaction uh, that I, that oh, I was wow. hoping for. Yeah. yeah, so it's like it opens up for a little bit and then people are like, ah, oh, now we gotta go back to- Everyone's a conspiracy theorist now. I loved conspiracy theories yeah. as a form of entertainment yeah. from 9-11 okay, to uh, the o Oklahoma City bombing, yeah. all of them, and, uh, and, but for fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not as a personality. <laughs> and now everyone has got some conspiracy, and they're all, and they're bad. They're so bad, they're conspiracy theories. Why do you think there's a lot of conspiracy theories, uh, theorists and libertarians? Like, what do you, is there a connect? Do you see a connection between those two? I, do, I, I don't know why I was so intrigued with, I mean, even UFOs. Uh, uh, yeah, this is kind of like, aren't we supposedly like there's people now of like, I've seen the bodies. Allegedly. Right? Yeah, but then it never happens. It's but, quite and, frustrating. And you, there's, there's so many uh, avenues of information that you don't know who's reading what about what. And I, yeah. well, I read a thing, but there's 80 things now. There's not one like loose change. All right. I, oh, I saw yeah. loose change and this is how I feel. But there's only a couple of uh, sources that everyone's. What do you think is the pleasure of a conspiracy theory as, you know, from like an artistic point of view? What, what did you enjoy about I, it? I think it's just like any other, be a sleuth. Yeah. Why do people play Clue? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. And, and the, I touch on that in the special, but it's, there's, there's something about it that almost reeks of being a fucking narc. Right. Like, hey, you know what? It's none of your business. If aliens came to this planet, they didn't come to meet you. So fucking leave it alone. You're the one who wanted a government. So uh, let them fucking handle it. Why did you become libertarian? Is that uh, like, were you born with it or was it life? Someone told me I was. Oh, really? Yeah. So someone, do you remember someone's who? libertarian. When I was doing stuff that I- Do you do you realize like everybody scores libertarian on the world's smallest political quiz? Like it yeah. took me a while to realize that. It wasn't me. It yeah. was like- Yeah, it's that, that, that thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so somebody told you you were. And yeah, the, based on like, seeing okay. my act. They go, you're, yeah. you're very libertarian. You're libertarian? Because yeah, the things you say, and I go, oh, okay. And so I looked into libertarianism and yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I scored that. <laughs> uh, what uh, among your uh, influences are Bill Hicks, right? or is that fair to say? Uh, or Bill or Hicks, not? I didn't get it's into just... till till later on in comedy when I was already. Well, again, when you get compared to him, you go, oh, okay. Yeah, but I, I knew of him, but I was because I was I was going to say like, what do you think of like a lot of comedians? And I think Hicks is a good example. Mitch Hedberg, also who you get compared to. They aren't libertarian. Like they, I mean, in a way, they're anti-authority, which is nice. But they're kind of like the worst sort of anti-corporate. 
You know, like yeah, the, no, you know, I, that advertisers have, you know, that's why I'm sucking on these cancer sticks, you know, because of advertising. Yeah, I think that's the, well, the drug angle, the, you know, free drugs and the, the socially, you know, that that's where they think, oh, Bill Hicks is libertarian. But no, I think he would definitely be like, like taxing the shit out of corporations or Bernie yeah. Sanders. Yeah, he'd yeah. definitely be more Bernie Sanders than Gary Johnson. Do you have- Did you even have a fucking candidate last election? Who's who's we? The libertarians. Oh yeah, yeah. It was Joe Jorgensen, the okay. uh, oh. a uh, psychology lecturer right. from uh, uh, Clemson. All right. Yeah, my wife and I, we, uh, my tour manager, co-host, producer, best friends. They live next to us, and when the when the ballots come, we just drop it off in their mailbox. You vote, drop our drop our ballots off. You vote for us. Good. That's as good a, a you know process as just about anybody else's. Um, who are your who who do you think are the best comedians, um, and why? Uh, in, like today in general, names yeah, or yeah, types? Uh, let's, or? Yeah, let's uh, start with today. Yeah, name some names. Well, I, I like the, the you just put Hedberg and Bill Hicks in the same yeah uh, s- sentence because when people do say or you're talking about oh comedy's about truth. And yeah. comedy's about you know, being a, a real and uh, saying what everybody thinks and is afraid to say. No, Hedberg talking about uh, ducks eat free at Subway wasn't. Right. Well, actually, that story is tr- based on a true story. But he was silly. Yeah. It was fucking fun and silly, and there didn't have to be any truth to it. It was right. ridiculousness. And um, he's the one. I think he's the one who started the joke of like. Why would people who are high on LSD go to roofs of buildings to see if they could fly? Like, why wouldn't they just take off from the street? I, I don't remember that. I one. don't know. I uh, think but it, it might have been. It's, him, it's, it sounds. Yeah. Yeah. I remember him talking about the doing acid uh, in the in, in the in the woods, so they wouldn't run into uh, authority figures. But we ran into a bear. It's way worse. <laughs> so you like that kind of stuff? Yeah, I loved Hedberg, but and, and he's. Uh, uh, always a great person to, to use as an example when comics start talking about how fucking lofty and it's our position to fight for free speech and we have to and we're on the You're vanguard the and oh shut the fuck up sick society right yeah there, there's there's uh, comedians have gotten so self important I have a, a, a there's a one this girl uh, I do remember her name I'm just not going to say it but just a tweet where you know when Twitter became unfun. And uh, she wrote, I will never meet a racist halfway based on whatever racist is in the news. I'm like, that's a completely wrong attitude. Like, yeah. We're all fighting for the minds of the stupid here. And if someone's outwardly racist, that means they're probably really lonely and they're joining a group that's going to let them in. Yeah, fucking meet a racist halfway and bring them over to your side of the street. And then you get, and, and, and get a fan. And then you just mold his stupid little head to, with what you want him to think. Because, uh, yeah, otherwise you're leaving money on the table, dummy. Uh, who uh, who are some people today that you find really uh, good? Uh, God, it's, I, I, you know, I, I, I'll have an answer for you by the end of the summer because okay. I am taking at least a year off, okay. I think. What and about, I, that, yeah. I'll start watching them because yeah. uh, during quarantine, like uh, guys like Sam Morrill, new guys that I just, because uh, I don't want to watch comedy. I don't want to ever... I'm, you know, I drink enough. I don't want to ever be in a position of this is a great bit I just thought of, or did I see it from that guy's special? Maybe I should ask him. Oh fuck, yeah. what's that guy's name? I watched his special. I can't remember. What about from the past? Like who are, who who's on your Mount Rushmore of comedy? Uh, st- there's that still hold up. Uh, but guys like Stephen Wright, I loved, and they and Hedberg, yeah. you can still watch their 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 shit still holds up. Uh, sometimes you watch comics. It's sad when you watch a Bill Hicks and it, a bit of his is still like that was a problem, you know, 35 years ago. And it's still a problem. That shouldn't be like I want that to be too like, hackneyed. It's yeah. it's sad when even Lenny Bruce talking about. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Why can't we do this? I can't you know, feed the poor or whatever. Right. You know, oh, too bad. That's still a problem. What? uh you know what? What do you hope for? I, I was about to say for the future, like obviously not for your kids, 
because you don't have kids. Do you hate kids? Yeah, I really, yeah, I have a real problem. Um, so what, I mean, you are, uh, I, th I looked it up. You're born in 1967. I can't do the math. So you're 50, 56, how, 56, yeah. uh, you know, you're going to live, especially now that you're drinking wine and you're, you know, you, you cut out smoking, you're going to live for like another 30 years. Yeah, I don't, How are you going to handle that? Like, what do you do to? The, uh, it's, uh, yeah, that's new. It's only a couple months that I realized, oh, I, I might not die like I expected to. Like, I was trying to live as long as mother, who right. made it to 63 with her, yeah, yeah the emphysema and all that. Uh, and now, I, yeah, I don't know. Well, you're going to blow by that, right? Well, the, yeah, that early retirement I was thinking about. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm probably going to have to start writing some more fucking jokes. Yeah. <laughs> but what, have... yeah, how do how do you like what what gets you not what gets you up in the morning? How do you, how do you go through the day, especially if you're peeling back? You're you're getting rid of the things that you use to get through the days. You're not smoking. You're not doing psychedelics as much. Um, you're shifting to to healthy, you know, fruit-based alcoholic beverages. I, you would have no idea how much joy I get out of just doing dumb shit, like just making new recipes now that I had to change my diet. And okay, okay, for cholesterol, I can do like red beans and rice. Never did that before. And I'll spend, I love to cook. I love to go thrift store shopping and find a bargain. That tuxedo <laughs> I was wearing last night, a dollar, Nick, a fucking dollar. I'm a, a natural wow, hoarder. You know it was in my mother's jeans. But uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I like to hoard a uh, quarantine. I, I, I get all my suits like by color and order and my How pants. How many suits folded. do you have? I think I, uh, the, this was before I had the house fire. So I had like, I pared it down like 35 jackets. Yeah. And, uh, but then I, and I've been buying, was, I've been buying most, for a year. Yeah. What's the most that you've ever spent on a jacket? Oh, uh, one time there, there was one Lily Pulitzer uh, green floral thing that I think I spent six hundred bucks on. That's uh, incredible. But generally, you could get a car for that. Yeah, I I, I, I spent a but lot of my early years speaking, in six hundred dollar cars. Yeah. I, I don't want to go back there. Uh, generally no. speaking, what do you pay? Like five bucks, ten bucks for yeah. a jacket? Yeah. yeah. Do you get them tailored then? Uh, if I yeah, if if it's good enough, I'll, I'll get it. Yeah. It's great when you buy a, find a three dollar jacket in a thrift store, but then it costs you like twenty five dollars to get it tailored. When did that start? I started that, that started early on in my telemarketing days because my mother would send me like goofy suits. We you know from thrift stores back when you know vintage was you know it wasn't was this pre vintage. This was just like er, er, bad late clothes. late eighties. So yeah. this is just the you know shit that. It just went out of style 10 years ago, so it's really cheap. And she'd send me these, so we'd all dress up in the telemarketing office and used car salesman suits. And then uh, then I, uh, throughout my career, I've worn dumb shit like for a while. I'd wear a Santa hat year-round for no reason. And then uh, With the telemarketing stuff, you've been kind of critical of yourself, or at least of the stuff you were selling, right? like you've described some of the, the telemarketing stuff you did, you know, as, as essentially scams, right? Yeah. Does that throw into any question for you, like the, the, the use of like free markets and things like that? Because I could see a comedian who does that and then it's like, this is why I hate capitalism and freedom. Um, but you're not that comedian. No, I mean, I, I, I hate that I, I had absolutely no uh, moral compass about. All right, I'm ripping people off because I ripped and you them were off definitely for a few ripping them bucks. off. Huh? You were definitely ripping them off. Or it was a gray area. So you say, "Hey, you're going to win a big prize if you order this product," and you know the prize isn't going to be that big. And but you didn't say how big it was. You uh, insinuated it's going to be bigger than what they're spending, but it's not. So they're not going to be happy. Uh, the, hopefully they're not so angry that they try to come after and find out who you are and prosecute you. Uh, so yeah, I should have had, but I was you know, early twenties. I didn't give a shit. I was making a lot of money. Do you, I, I mean, do you think it's up to people like caveat emptor, let the buyer beware or. It, it, my problem with libertarianism is the more I get involved and 
realize how much I don't know. I can't call myself a libertarian. Like that fucking, that pharma bro guy. Yeah. Would right. libertarianism say, hey, it's his right to jack up fucking this AIDS medication through the roof and fuck them if they die? Because I think that's yeah. a libertarian attitude. And I, I, I go, I can't. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, on some level, yes. But then it's also like the pharma market is so regulated, et cetera. I mean, like libertarians can weasel their way out of any bad <laughs> market outcome, right? Because they'll say, well, you know, the FDA, you know, runs all of that kind of stuff. And so the government's thumbprints are on everything because otherwise people would come out with generic versions of every drug and, you know, they'd be free or close to free. And that's why it's guys like that maybe yeah. is the answer to the question of why we're all into this fantasy murder stuff. Yeah. Because you can't really murder <laughs> yeah. people. So let's just watch other people who did murder people and, uh, yeah, elevate their status. Yeah. I want to watch more Dahmer. Yeah, because I can't punch pharma bro in the face. Okay, um, when is your special going to come out? Uh, the special my, without a name. The special will come out as soon as I get it edited. And where will we find it? I don't know. Uh, that's a, then my manager will try to shop it around. I think I might just put it out. Here's a, I wanted to do this with the last special that came out right at the beginning of quarantine, uh, but it had been filmed. Uh, long before uh, you porn uh, agreed to release my new special. And I thought that's really funny gimmick, but that was also right around the time that they were getting busted for like having like revenge porn, rape porn that yeah. people say that you I couldn't certify that you were that above 18 because <laughs> you don't have a driver's license because you're a libertarian, right? Uh, do you worry at all? I was talking with other people in different contexts here at Freedom Fest, some people who had uh, put out, you know, they've created movies and documentaries that are pretty, you know, controversial. And they were saying like, you know what, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go to Netflix. I don't want to go to Amazon video. I don't even want to go to YouTube because you put stuff up and you really don't have any, you know, guarantee that they're not in a couple of days are going to be like, you know what, we we're blocking this and we own the rights and things like that. Do you worry about that at all? Because your comedy is, I hate like the word edgy, it just isn't right for it. But like you put out the type of stuff that you could see people getting really pissed at and saying like, we got to shut this and down. And a lot of it's out there. That's, yeah. I'm at a place where I'm not famous enough to know if I've been canceled. Like, yeah. I had stuff on Netflix that it's not there anymore, but there's everything that goes on Netflix eventually goes away. Nothing's yeah, permanent yeah. and they don't tell you, you don't have yeah. a, they don't go, Hey, by the way, you're pulling, we're pulling your shit down. You don't know. Yeah. So if you got canceled, a lot of the stuff that did air on Netflix, they would pull down for content reasons. There's right. stuff that you go, Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely couldn't get away with that now. Do you think, I mean, are we too, uh, touchy or sensitive as a society? Like, is that something you go back to the 70s and this might be a good way to, to wrap things up with beautiful symmetry since we started talking about the 70s. You know, when you look at stuff that was on like, you know, CBS, NBC and ABC in the 70s, where, you know, on like All in the Family or something, they would use racial and ethnic epithets like as filler words. But if you said shit, yeah, my you, God, yeah. the fucking roof's right. falling off. So yeah. you, it's a trade out. You That's, could say yeah. retard back then, but you couldn't, uh, shit is going to get you right. canceled. You couldn't even have beer, right? Like, I mean, for a while on TV, it wouldn't, you couldn't have a brand of beer. It would just say beer on yeah. the can. Yeah, stuff. I think I uh, actually, I still in play uh, in ads for liquor. Now, liquor ads came back, but they can't show yeah. them actually drinking it. But again, they, they trade out one, you can't do this, but now you can do this, but you can't do the other thing. So the so censorship you, is like always in motion. That's kind of, but do you think overall, like if you tallied it all up and stuff like that, would you say it's, you know, where it's freer now? Like you can do and say more things in more places than say in 1980 or something. Yeah, we'll do, it's a million outlets. Yeah. If you want it, just be really offensive. They can't stop you because there is there, there's too much whack-a-mole. OK, and there's a new streaming service opening up here. I will let you say anything. And then they get shut down. And then so it's yeah, they, and that's good. You've, exactly. There's a loophole. You exploit it. They shut it down. You open up a new loophole. 
that just keeps going like that. So that's kind of beautiful. Don't you yeah, think? no, that's yeah. why the government has always been just another thing. Okay, I'm a rat in a maze, and there's a bunch of things out there. There's Who do you worry about more? Like, do you worry about the government or the corporations or the the churches, or, or are they all kind of equal to you in terms of they're all trying to to trap? Well, you I or... think uh, the lawyers uh, are the ones you, you worry about getting sued or audited. Those I, I don't know if that comes with age, but yeah, that, that, those are the, the ones that scare me the most. Uh, final, uh, I used to work as a uh, music journalist and a teen magazine editor, and we would always say, you know, if you were talking to Kirk Cameron in 1986 or 87 or Ozzy Osbourne or whatever, the final question was always message to your fans. Doug Stanhope, message to your fans. Uh, yeah, don't don't kill yourself. It's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I don't have a message for my fans. If I do, I, I will uh, wrap it in a fist fuck joke and call it new material. So you'll get the message <laughs> at the show. I appreciate that very much. That's a great message. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Dan. Dan.